features are Perry Mason, the case of the puzzle suitor. Another brand new mystery story by Earl Stanley Gardner, creator of Perry Mason, master criminal lawyer, champion of justice, genius at solving mysteries. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, by Kame, the mild beauty soap for a smoother, softer complexion, and ivory flakes. The flakes that help your clothes wear up to twice as long. And now, here's Margaret MacDonald. You know, it's amazing the little things we folks at home can do to help bring peace nearer. We can save used fat. We can buy war bonds. We can make everything last longer. For one thing, you can get longer wear from your clothes. There have been times in the past, I'm sure, when you've been careless in the washing of a dress or a sweater, and it hasn't worn well. Well, these aren't the days to let that happen. These days, for your nice clothes, change to Ivory Flakes Care. It'll mean up to twice the wear. Your slips, your rayon dresses, your sweaters and blouses. Ivory Flakes helps them stay almost like new, up to twice as long. Don't wash things like that the wrong way, with the wrong kind of soap, because that's what often fades colors and frays seams. Do use Ivory Flakes. They're the flake form of pure ivory soap. They're tried and tested, proved absolutely safe for any washable fabric or color. Why, all kinds of clothes were washed over and over in Ivory Flakes, Some of them more times than you'd wash yours in a year. Yet they stayed practically like new. Try Ivory Flakes for your rayon stockings, too. Other tests, stocking strain tests, prove that rayons washed in Ivory Flakes last twice as long. And that nightly care will improve the fit of rayons, too. Change to Ivory Flakes care for all your nice things. You'll get up to twice the wear. Adventures of Perry Mason, the case of the puzzle suitor. Perry Mason was more inclined to be amused than impressed when a mysterious young woman forced herself into his office to warn him that a man named Harriman C. Winthrop would be visiting the lawyer shortly to make a will, and that he was being unduly influenced by malign forces. But when Mr. Winthrop actually did show up a few minutes later and did want to make a will, the lawyer was interested, so much so that he has put off a vacation to investigate. Right now, Perry Mason faces the distinguished 64-year-old scientist, Harriman C. Winthrop. Mr. Mason, I I want to know who the young woman was. I've told you she didn't give her name. Well, then describe her. Sorry, I can't do that. If you want to retain me under those circumstances, all right. Uh, It's all nonsense. That undue influence business. I know what I'm doing. In that case, do you want to tell me what's to be done with your property? Oh, oh, all right. Probably just some idiotic woman passing on gossip. Yet there are only two people who knew I was coming here this afternoon. It might be a good idea to tell me who they are. Lois Dalton, she's my secretary, and Marie Hamilton, my nurse. I see. Now, look here, I think you owe it to me to tell me if your visitor was either of those girls. Not knowing either of them, I can hardly tell you which was which. Well, I'll describe them to you. Now, Lois Dalton, my secretary, she's about 24, average height. Weight about 112 or so. Light hair that curls around her neck. Very good figure and bright blue eyes. I feel sure my visitor was not Miss Dalton. All right. Now, Marie Hamilton, my nurse, is pretty, too. She's dark, with slate gray eyes. A little bit heavier than my secretary, but she's got a beautiful complexion. I'm certain it wasn't your nurse. But those are the only two people who knew. I think you ought to describe your visitor. And I feel I shouldn't, Mr. Winthrop. Now, the question is, do you wish to retain me? Of course I do. You've got brains. If anything happens, you'll back that will up and make it stick. Under the circumstances, I want to be absolutely sure you're making this will of your own volition. Of course I am. Got a pencil? Yes. All right, then. Now, here's the way I want my property to go. 
$50,000 in cash to my physician, Dr. J- Frank uh, Needham. Frank uh, Needham. I have that. And $50,000 to my secretary, Lois Dalton. When you got that? Lois Dalton, I have that. The balance of my property is to be divided, share and share alike, between Marie Hamilton, my nurse, and John Hanley Stowe, my old friend and former partner. Mm-hmm. That will be a considerable amount? It will be a very considerable amount. I want to know something about John Hanley Stowe. Well, John's an old friend of mine. We were partners years ago. He left the country and went to China where he did a lot of writing. And then he got picked up by the Japs in Shanghai and held a prisoner. He's due to arrive in a few days on an exchange ship. You've been in touch with Mr. Stowe these past years? No, off and on. Nothing regular. For several years, I sent him rather large sums of money from our business partnership. Then we had a chance to sell out. Well, we accepted the offer. I didn't write him so much after that. Oh, but you did write occasionally. Yes. John's my best friend. That's why I want him in my will. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, this Marie Hamilton, she's an old friend, too? Oh, she's my nurse. A trained nurse? No, practical nurse. She's had training, but she didn't graduate. A very sensible young woman. Oh, uh, has she been with you long? Well, does that matter? I think it does. Oh, uh, three months. And yet you're leaving her half your fortune? Any objection? As your lawyer, it's my duty to point out that the situation might well cause some relative to appear and claim... Relative, bar, Cut them off of the dollar. No more, no less. One more thing. Provide that any beneficiary who contests this will in any way forfeits any money to be received. That's uh, legal, isn't it? Properly worded, such a clause is legal. Good. Uh, can you dictate that right away? No. Well, why not? There's some things I want to look up first. I want that will drawn up and signed by the time John Hanley Stowe arrives. Why? Because I do. Particularly in view of this talk of, of undue influence. I insist on having it all executed before John arrives. I see. I don't like to make up a will like this in a rush, barring an emergency. Well, this is an emergency in a sense. Very well. You come back tomorrow at two and I'll have a draft of the will prepared. And I'll be here. I have to use strong reading glasses these days on account of my eyes. It may take me a little time to read it through, but I'll be here. Oh, good day. Oh, just a minute. I, I want to have a few words with my secretary. There may be one or two last-minute suggestions. If you'll excuse me, I'll be right back. Certainly. If you should decide to give me a description of that visitor, I'll... I'll consider that. it. Bella? Bella, where are you? Well, I'm right here, Chief, in the law library. Oh, I didn't see you. What is it, Chief? I'm keeping Winthrop in my office for a few minutes. Meantime, I want you to go down the hall and get Paul Drake. Tell him to shadow Winthrop when he leaves my office. I want to find out where he goes and what he does. Is that all? Tell Drake to find out something about Marie Hamilton, the nurse. Lois Dalton, the secretary, and John Hanley Stowe, the friend arriving on the exchange ship. You got that? Yes, Chief, I have it. Uh, try to keep him in your office a few minutes so Paul Drake has a chance, will you? I'll do the best I can. But tell him to hurry. Something very fishy about all this. It smells to heaven. Why? Yes, nurse, for one thing. After three months, he leaves her a big slice of his fortune. Why? Maybe she's the one that's bringing the undue influence to bear. First, she gets him to make a will in her favor, and then... Oh, chief, people have been murdered for reasons like that. Exactly, so get going. Get Paul Drake on the job. gone long enough. Did you get it signed? No. You didn't? Well, why not? Well, don't be silly. Those things take time. I should think when a person of your standing makes out a will, you could get it done right away. Just say I'm Harriman C. Winthrop and I'm in a hurry. I know they wouldn't push me around like that. Not even the great Perry Mason. Oh, go on, will you? I want to get home. I'm tired and nervous. All right. But tell me first why he couldn't get it drawn up for you. Because he has to dictate it and get it ready for my signature. Oh. But you did give it to him. Of course I gave it to him. Well, when's he going to have it done? Well, tomorrow afternoon, I hope. I still think you should have stayed right there till you got it all settled. Well, he's going to rush it through as fast as he can. Don't worry about it. He'll have it before John Stowe gets here. I don't see why you can't get a simple thing like a few words written down on paper and just sign your name. Well, I don't want it to be right. I want my will to stand up. 
thing that worries me, though, is, is that woman. What woman? Oh, Mason told me someone was in his office just before I got there. She told him I was coming to see him. What? Yes, that's right. Then she told him that I was being unduly influenced. Hmm. Can't figure out who it could be. You can't? Well, I can. Huh? It's that meddling little spitfire. Oh, that... No, 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 you're wrong. Oh, it's somebody else. But nobody else knew. Well, that's what I thought. But I must have been wrong. drives off, we wonder what this conversation means. Who is Mr. Winthrop's companion in the car, this woman who was so anxious to have the will signed? And why? Is it possible the elderly scientist is going to sign his own death warrant when he signs the document he's in such a rush to get? Tomorrow we'll hear Paul Drake's report on the principles in this dramatic case of the puzzle suitor. Friends, have you ever thought of this? That your complexion is actually the background for all the rest of your features? For example, if your skin is lovely, smooth, and soft, why, against that background, all your other features, your hair, your eyes, are at their very best. Your complexion, you see, is a lot more than just your complexion. And that's why you ought to try wonderfully mild Kame. Because just one cake of marvelously mild Kame can give you a smoother, softer, younger-looking complexion. Simply change from improper skin care to regular, gentle, really mild care with Cam A, and just one cake of Cam A will give you the lovelier skin that will emphasize and bring out the best in all your other features. Now, I mean that sincerely, because we had doctors, skin specialists, actually test Cam A's mild, gentle cleansing. They had woman after woman try it. And listen, most of those women soon had definitely smoother, softer, younger-looking complexions. And you can do the same. Simply change to the Cam-A method of really correct mild cleansing without irritation. It's called the Cam-A Mild Soap Diet. Directions are right on the Cam-A wrapper. And remember, one cake, your very first cake of Cam-A, can give you the smoother, softer, the younger-looking skin that will make you a lovelier woman. Remember, thousands of America's loveliest brides use Cam-A. The New Adventures of Perry Mason are brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, by Kame, the mild beauty soap for a smoother, softer complexion, and Ivory Flakes, the flakes that help your clothes wear up to twice as long. Now, this is Alan Kant inviting you to listen again tomorrow to the new adventures of Harry Mason. Some people are getting extra ration points. You can, too, by turning in your old, used cooking fat. Every drop is needed to save soldiers' lives. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.